Charles, would you leave your money to your pets instead of your family? Yes. Okay. <laughs> have done, have tried to organise this. I say tried to because it turned out I sent in the draft will to the solicitor and he sent it back saying, no, you cannot bequeath your income, your, your whatever you're living, your estate, to an animal. You, uh, can't. They, you can't do it. Uh, you can instead have a letter of wishes. Right. Okay. And it is, we love Nala so much, our beautiful cat, that, uh, and there she is. Oh. Look at that, isn't she gorgeous? Oh, look at that. And she knows that she's loved and protected. But what, where and, would but the, the point money is, have gone? Like, but, what, but, what, but to be serious, the idea is that if, if we are run over by a bus or taken by time, uh, the cat will be properly looked after. Right. And so we have to provide for that. So when you hear of these, like, celebs, because you, you hear these stories yeah. quite a bit, don't you, and they're like, I don't know, a Hollywood A-list star, and it's like they left all their money not to their children but to their dog. How does that... So that, that's not actually possible. It has to be a... Because this doesn't... Somebody still I have to look... I bet it is look, possible in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Somebody would still have to look after the dog. To, I, I just... I really struggle with, like, the I dog's just... not going to go to the... You know, no. solicitors yeah. and, and I know, love the idea the of Marla just with her shades on, just like going into <laughs> yeah. HSBC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Into the Maldives. Mean, like, how does it work? I'm just it it makes it baffles me. How it works is you provide provision for the animal. Right. And there are stories of people getting houses for them and, and staff and chefs and medical advisors, you know, to look after the pets into the future. Mm -hmm. uh, but in our case, in fact, it is for Nala and then for different animal charities. Okay. Right. So yes. It's part of your letter of wishes of yes. what you want to do. Okay. Got and there you. is a case for actually, I mean, I, I, I'm torn about this. Uh, will you leave your money to your children? Let's assume you have money and you've paid off the mortgage by then. Or do you think, in fact, they shouldn't know that there's going to be anything? Mm. There are people who think, mm, particularly, I mean, usually it's very rich people, uh, seriously rich people, who decide not to leave their money because they think it's not going to do anybody any good to know that money's coming down the road. Karl Lagerfeld, when he died in 2019, left $1.2 million yes. to his cat. Wow. If I... If he was my dad... <laughs> I'd feel a bit offended. I, I know that there's, like, a lesson, like, yeah, you have to work hard to make your own money, mm -hmm. but I'd just be looking at that cat, like, what did you do? It is, it is <laughs> sort of... It's frustrating to look at a cat and be like, you have so much more money than... <laughs> yeah. we just, can we just... We've overlooked the cat celebrating a, a 30th <laughs> birthday. This is her at Versailles. <laughs> This wow. is Karl Lagerfeld's cat last week celebrating her 13th birthday incredibly, look, in Versailles. I, I, that is a very fancy cat bowl. And I mean, that but that's the thing, because she's got $1.2 to... $1. million to spend. She's got... A, like, wow. What does a cat need with that money? But, and... you see, this is... Given that you're so, and you are, in a good, nice way, into compassion and fairness and equality, I'm a great believer in animal rights. Yeah. And yeah. actually, oh, no, we all share me... the world. Yes. Why shouldn't cats have as much as we I have? I think no, I'm, I'm totally on the market to be someone's pet. My next time, I'm coming back as a cat. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed, you are my comfort pet I, when you I come in here. Often, and I'm yours. I quite often get called a female dog, so maybe I could... Never. Uh, never. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, I think I just... It, for me, I think... I don't know if it's, like, the working-class background in me is that you just work, work, work to leave yeah. your kids. Yeah. I can't imagine being, like, you know... I mean, I love my dog ever so much, but I can't imagine being, like, sorry, Ginger gets that, girls. Uh, also, you can't... Uh, you want to have children to Winfrey. look after your dog, you know? Yeah, the exact that moment. Makes more Correct, sense. yeah. Oprah Winfrey has left, apparently, $30 million aside $30 million to look after her three dogs should she die before them. I just think, wow. think of all the, like, the amazing legacy you could leave behind with that money. Not that you should force anyone to do good deeds, and I'm sure she's doing lots of them with all the mm. other millions, but $30 million, you could... How much does the dog do need? Like, yeah. yeah. Essentially, would the dog notice the difference? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is what it comes down to, doesn't yes. it? Does yes. the dog notice the difference between Versailles and just a lovely little like, Going corner on a walk of a room? And, yeah. But how do you know? Okay, I don't know. This is, this is we don't. Yeah. I don't we know. We will never know. We will, we will never, never know. know. Uh, OK, well, this is an interesting one here. Our next story. The secret to a long life. Not chasing men, <laughs> says Mary uh, Spires, who is 106 years old. Hey, Mary. And she uh, <laughs> reveals that not chasing after blokes is actually the secret to living longer. What do you say, Ashley? I think that's why I'm ill. <laughs> <laughs> my, youth, my youth is catching up with me early. I spent way too much time chasing men. Do you know what? I actually um, became really good friends with a lady called Lady Style, and she lived to 104. Ooh. And I asked her the secret... Um, 
of old age and living long. And she said, fall in love as many times as possible. But I think the similar oh, message is, don't stress and don't like wait because yeah. anxiety and stress, there's a lot of cortisol and adrenaline in your yeah. system. So I think if you can just enjoy life and obviously if you're chasing blokes or women or whatever it is and they're causing you anxiety, I think that's the message. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the secrets, and I have a, most of my role models are older people. For example, the late Duke of Edinburgh lived to be 99, mm -hmm. the late Queen who lived to be 96. They had a purpose in life. Mm -hmm. They kept going. I work with the actress Dame Judi Dench. We do shows together. She's going to be 90 later this year. Wow. She's engaged with life, being involved with what's going on around you, still doing things, I think, is the great secret. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that. Still doing things and, well, hopefully not men. <laughs> um, does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one way, of, one way of putting it. It did, it did, it did make sense, right? It did, yeah. But this lovely lady who we're talking about, Mary Spears, she had a fiancé, a boyfriend, who tragically died during the Second World War. And she didn't want... And I think she's probably holding his medals there. She didn't want oh, anybody else in her life. Aww. And she lived with her two sisters. And she had, obviously, a contented life. But I bet you during that life, she did worthwhile things. And, oh, oh look at this, she's obviously a keen royalist. For her 100th birthday, she got the card in the middle yep. from the late wow. Queen. And then she's continued to get cards, clearly, from Charles and Camilla and also, as the years go by. And also, she has an immaculate manicure. Uh, so, like, did, we, I, did we notice that? I love that all of these loves in her life. Like, you've got the Queen, picture. you've got the King, and then Manchester City. Oh, Manchester yeah. City, she's long supported. Yes, you see, she's, she's grooming herself. Well, she also she's supports the team that always herself. wins, so that's going to help as well. <laughs> <laughs> if you that's support stress. Newcastle United, it's not, gonna look, it's not looking good for me. <laughs> she's back in the right horse. She doesn't have to worry about anything. <laughs> oh, I love that. Well, Finally, uh, the funniest joke at this year's Edinburgh Fringe has been crowned. Uh, comedian Mark Simmons, I know him, he's a very lovely man, very, yeah. very funny indeed, was voted the winner with, I was, going to, uh, I was going to sail around the globe in the world's smallest ship, but I bottled it. Boom, boom. I, I love I it. I like that. I it's mean, good. It's, it's giving Christmas cracker, isn't it? Yes. Well, yeah. The, yeah. These yeah. winning jokes tend to be puns. Uh, That's I'd what be... Joel was explaining. You was explaining this this morning, weren't uh, yeah. you? Yeah. So the, the, yeah, the idea of small, small puns like that, Christmas cracker jokes especially, the idea is it brings people together because we all kind of groan at them. Yeah. Because if it was like a divisive joke that was like about politics or about or something that's really clever, mm -hmm. only certain people around the table might get it and other people don't get it and it doesn't bring us together yes. as a family. Yeah. So the idea of a Christmas cracker joke is that it's a bit bad. See if this <laughs> one's too sophisticated for you. Okay. Describe yourself. Describe yourself, Joel, in three words. The answer is lazy. <laughs> I like that. Get it? Get it? Yes. I guess yes. 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 See, it's, this is where they've become a bit divisive for me. I'm not, <laughs> not as quick. Got, what's your favourite of these? Oh, well, I haven't seen them. I've been taking salsa lessons for months, but I just don't feel like I'm progressing. It's just one step forward, two steps back. <laughs> yes. That's good. See, that is a pun. Um, we've, we've got some good ones from viewers here. Lisa said... I got told on a Zoom meeting last week, but no one laughed. Oh no! See, this is why I'm not a comedian. <laughs> okay, come on, on. You sell, it, the sell it, sell it already, have you? Okay, wait there. I told a joke on a Zoom meeting last week, but no one laughed. Turns out I'm not remotely funny. Oh, oh that's good. Good. That's good. I'm not remotely funny. What's I'm your not... favourite one? What do you call a man with no shins? Tony. Oh. <laughs> I loved that. Oh. That's my humour. Well, it's, it's, it, my... it's rather grim and it leads sure. to a groan. <laughs> Inspired by the picture I of like King that. Charles had... there, mine is, my yes. offering to you is, what does the king do when he burps? He issues a royal pardon. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Oh, gosh. I love it. Thank you very much. There are so many more in here I want to do, but we haven't got time. There are so <laughs> many good ones. Just quickly, don't ever buy Velcro. It's a rip-off. <laughs> it's so <laughs> good. <laughs> Uh, thank you both. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for visiting our This Morning YouTube channel. Uh, we upload new content every single day, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the morning.